Welcome, everyone. This is Planet Fuels, and you're listening to Lotro Players News, where we take a look at the latest news in Lotro and hear Lotro Players. And this week we have with us Terry Edwin. Hi, hi. Ariandis. Hey, everybody. Sanswinda. Hello. And Black. Hey, guys. How's everybody doing? Hello, everyone. Let's head in and see what's in the news this week. And since the Lotro staff was apparently in PAX at PAX East, there, all we have this week is the Lotro Beacon, where we seem to have someone flying a kite. That is the Moon Moth kite. Also, they're wearing, I think, the Moon Moth dress and definitely the Moon Moth cloak from last year. And you could count on Terry Edwin to identify all the cosmetics. That's yeah, a really good much. identify, too, from <laughs> above like that. That then, is my specialty. Yeah, that's your specialty. <laughs> Let's then head into the community spot, spotlights where you could join Langeville Combat Classes in April for their Lore Master series. And there is a new song written by Acacia Fitch featuring the new fiddle. Ooh. Ooh, boy. I, I completely forgot. I'll have to mark that one because I forgot about that little piece. And Gamolio Dan is about to hit 100 episodes in his series. Nice. Congrats. And. Noten Zomber and Praz Tirt presents The Fiddle April 7th on the leg ear. And yeah, I'm sure I got that wrong. Anyone here speak German? <laughs> no. <Nine. laughs> A little bit, but not enough to pronounce that correctly. Very well. Anyway, I suspect that if you go into the leg ear, knowing German will be A+. plus. And Acorn presents April Oaks with, with the twist. Join him for a solo artist concert on April 7th on Laurelin. Oh, Actually, today. that was today. Yeah. Never, oh, that's right. So it's the thing on the leg here. Anyway, I should yeah. skip the stuff that's already happened. And yes, Gilead Guard celebrates its 11th year anniversary on March 31st with a concert by flash mob musicians and in a variety of contests and games, including synchronized dancing, funny emote sequencing, a fashion show, a sparring contest. Actually, it was March 31st. That's already passed it. But hey, congrats on 11 years. Yeah, 11 yeah, years, so though. That's great. So it was quite a busy event that they had there. 11 years as a kinship. There are very few kinships that have been along around that long since that would have been before the game released. Oh, wow. And it says that a lot of the, or well, many of the original founders were there to celebrate. That's pretty cool. That's pretty good. I suspect a lot of the founders maybe even had lifetime accounts or something like that because. Oh, yeah, probably back then, yeah. Yeah, because the founders said. And now for our weekly comment. What's your favorite title? The Fierce. On my little <laughs> hobbit hunter. <laughs> Ooh, well traveled. Well traveled is my favorite. Yeah, well traveled is certainly a popular one. You can guess what mine is. Skirmisher of Middle Earth. Yeah, because I use that. In, <laughs> yes, right. Because I use that quite yep. a bit. So I would hope so, considering how many characters you have that have that title. <laughs> <laughs> and Terry, what's yours? Well. Okay, so here's the thing. I have lots of characters, so I don't have just one favorite title. It depends <laughs> on which character I happen to be on at any given moment. Um, obviously, my favorite for Terry Adwin is the one that I'm never going to change because I earned Skirmisher of Middle-Earth, and by golly, it's going to be her title for the end of forever. <laughs> um... But on, like on my Runekeepers, I like to use the Wise, which I got through... Uh, Extra life. And then well traveled is also a good one. Especially for characters who are of a more adventurous journeyman type of bent. Um, I actually collect titles on my burglars because if I've got characters that are going to rotate through them 
it's probably going to be the burglar. Just <laughs> like because. <Sir> <laughs> Yeah, like Sarissa, because you can't just have a single identity as a burglar. You've got to be able to change it up. Um, one of my favorite burglar titles is The Sinister, which is the uh, title that you get for completing the Ale Association Initiation Quest. Um, I also quite like uh, Purveyor, of Lo- Purve- Purveyor of Odd Things, which is the kindred title for the Madam Seekers. Uh, Seeker of Deep Places, which you get for entering Moria. And uh, my favorite landscape title for the burglar currently is the Sly and Cunning, which you get for collecting the foxes. Which I'm one away from, by the way. The by the <laughs> which one? Which brown, one? The brown <laughs> fox. <laughs> ah. Then in the fan site news, Andane got lost in Hingris. Well, if anybody's seen the way that ending plays, nobody is at all surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Poor ending, though. Of all the places to get lost. Ugh. Ooh, is that the spider play? Yeah. Oh, yes. yes. The spider area of Mordor. And Gormus goes to Galtra. Oh, Scormus goes to Galtra. Oh, boy, I've been wanting to alliterate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Scormus goes to Galtra. For episode 43 of this series, Scormus fails at Lotro. Bloodborne plays as captain in the Gladden server, and which was a stream, and then Nelnardis does some epic questing. And our screenshot of the week shows... But is that a skipping contest or <laughs> what? That's a, I believe that's a dancing high elf and a jumping hobbit, but I might be Over mistaken. Water. It actually looks like a pair of jumping characters. They might both be jumping. Yeah. You gotta admit though, that hobbit got some air. Like it's <laughs> it's, oh, yeah. it's even with the top of the human or elf's head. <laughs> oh yes. And that's a really moist place in which to be doing a jumping contest. And this week's screenshot is sent to us by uh, Malita. So therefore, let's head out and see what's on sale. Yes. So the sample of the week is plus 100% mark acquisition for 90 minutes times one with coupon code MARKAC now through April 12th. And 20% off some really nifty stuff with shared wardrobe, uh, <laughs> cosmetic outfit slots. If you don't already have all seven unlocked, um, we need more, by the way, mounted combat traits spec and cosmetic slots and select cosmetics. And as I always say during cosmetic sales, uh, double check to make sure that you cannot, that it is actually a store exclusive, that you cannot find a similar appearance like in the skirmish camp or on landscape somewhere. Um, because don't spend Lotro points if you can get it elsewhere in the game. It's also worth noting that Mordor is on sale this week as well for the first time, I think. Yes, the uh, I saw that in the launcher, one of the loading screens, actually. Um, the two higher packs through the Lotro market, the, um, the Collector's Edition and the Ultimate Edition, are 20% off, I think. All right, then let's head to our site news, and we will begin with some April Fool's articles to follow up on a tradition here at the site. And the first one was about some new additions to the Lotro store. I just saw this. Oh, Zinger. (laughs) Oh, Zinger. This is fantastic. Oh, it was awesome. Yes. Zinger frequently knocks it out of the park. Um, but this was great because if you read the description for the decoration of Mount Doom, um, mm-hmm. it's fantastic. And then um, the best thing is the Arendelle's torch, which requires you to continuously buy Arendelle's batteries. <laughs> <laughs> And the little screenshot thingy has Durin Cell Plus on the battery. Yes, oh! yes, yes. Durin Cell. Plus. 
Oh my gosh, the description for the Mount Doom decoration. Yes. That might be my favorite. I love it so much. <laughs> it's okay if I yeah. read it. Yeah, go ahead. Just for the people on the podcast who are listening to this live, this is just a taste of what's on this article. You need to go read the rest of it. But it says, you know, um, decoration, Mount Doom, usable housing item, burst your neighbor's bubbles. Item description. Ever wanted that one housing spot, but it was being occupied? Place one or a druid and call in the morning. Once the lava hardens, nobody will be left to contest your neighborhood domination. In addition, you'll be able to alter the weather dynamic in your housing region. Until the ash and lava inevitably decimate your favorite fishing spots and ruin that freshly painted gazebo, you'll be dancing in the rain. And then it has warning in red letters. Placing this item in your homestead will cause a cataclysmic reaction, wiping out all owned houses in the homestead. If two players attempt to place one, only the first will take effect. The subsequent decoration will be sent to escrow. SSG is not responsible for any neighborhood claims of tyranny or singed bear rugs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'll stick to the rather tame housing decoration that's indoors and doesn't blow up the housing neighborhood. <laughs> And, of course, a Great Eagle Eye video drone. Yes. Yes. And yeah. Hornblower's Reparation, which was also fantastic. <laughs> because, yes, we need reparations for what she did to everybody with those pies. So let's then head into SSG and Fancy Flight Digital Bundle Sale. This was Squirrel's first of two articles um, for April Fool's. Right. And this was then a combo of the Lord of the Rings Online plus the Lord of the Rings Living Card Game. Oh, that's awesome. And apparently they said that they'll start out with the awnings. <laughs> I love how the comments somewhat maybe someone believed it. They're like, is this is there gonna be a link to this bundle? <laughs> <laughs> it would be a fantastic bundle if it was a thing. And in his other article, he has a developer's diary to the updates to the Bjorning class. Yeah, Bjorning 2.0. So this this one almost got me because I saw it like two days later and I wouldn't even think about April Fool's at that point. It wasn't it wasn't until it got really ridiculous and I was like, oh no. <laughs> well and the unless I'm wrong, the articles don't have firm dates like at the top sometimes. So you can just yeah, go along yeah, and oh, you don't know how recent it is until you see like the first comment, oh April first, you know. <laughs> Yeah, there are always some things that that's why you have to take with a grain of salt anything that happens on April 1st. <laughs> so anything else on April Fool's before we go on to something else? And then I posted a video series where <laughs> Finally, Finn the Northern Kingdoms for a video series on this where I went through all of the content for the new zone that is the Northern Mirkwood stuff, the Lake Town stuff, the Dale stuff, and of course the Erebor stuff. So covering all of the original release quests that are in those. And also the Black Book of Mordor chapters 5 and 6. Have you already watched video series? Terry won't be watching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least not for several months, yes. So you has the whole question. thing. I'm sorry, Pine. You had a question. I was just gonna ask, have you released the whole thing already? Or is it like you just released the first one and they're gonna no, start now? Is, or no, that is I posted the article after finishing the whole thing. So I gotcha. posted the entire series. Now it does not include the episodic content, but I'll be starting a, another series on that in a couple of days that is going to be showing all of those episodes. 
So we will have also uh, the lay of rust and rhyme following that. But this is all the stuff prior to that. So let's head into our new player question. And this week's question comes from Ruvalara of Gladden. And Erendus, what is, what do they say? Um, they say, um, I'm a fairly new free player who's been farming deeds like crazy to save up Lotro points. Other than the writing skill, which I already bought, what account upgrades would you save up for first and why? The wallet upgrade for more inventory space. Yeah, barter, Ooh, yes. barter wallet. Yeah, barter wallet is a very definite upgrade you will be wanting. And does that include the gold currency cap raise or no? It actually is separate from the gold currency cap raise. Okay. So actually there is a thing on Amazon you can grab, um, which is the Samwise Games You Pack. It's like nine ninety nine or something. And it gives you the writing skill for every character you make. Um, it also has two other things. I, know, I think it has the bag, extra bag slot. And it unlocks the gold cap as well, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, nice. Yeah, but he, he was, he was asking, they were asking from the point of view of a free player. Yeah, if you're going completely free to play, like you don't plan on ever spending any money in the game, it, um, a, it can be a lot harder that way because even a single month subscription unlocks a whole bunch of stuff um, across all of your characters that are active during that month. But as opposed to, you know, kind of, purchasing everything per diem. Um, but the other thing you were, are going to want to save up for is your um, trait set bonuses down the sides. Oh, yeah. That's going to be important. Mm-hmm. Very. Yep. What are those? I'm sorry. Um, when you're in your trait line and you're yeah. spending your points along the left-hand side, you've got your little other skills that unlock as you apply points to your trait line. If you are preferred or free to play, you have to buy those. They're 95 points a piece. Uh, okay, gotcha. Oh, I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. It's easy to forget about if you're not, if, if you're VIP. Mm-hmm. Is that one of the things that would be unlocked um, for your characters if you went VIP for a month? Yes. yes. The catch to that is that your character has to reach level six while you're uh, v- while you're subscribed, because you have to pick a specialization to open those up. Ah. So you can't just kind of create a bunch of characters and leave them sit. You've got to actually play them up to level up to at least level six and pick a specialization, and then they're unlocked. So that's something like an hour of playing for each char- character, probably. Yeah, about. Maybe less if you're super speedy or something. Depends on which starting area you decide to do, too. I think, actually, if you're not as direction challenged as my mother is, um, the Elf Dwarf area is a little bit more compact. There's less running all over the place, as opposed to the uh, Man Hobbit one. Very well. Then anyone else have any other suggestions? Well, and then after those unlocks, you're going to be looking toward uh, quest areas. It's just going oh, to say yes. quest areas because you're going to want more opportunities to gain levels and earn loader points. Yep. Mm-hmm. You used Absolutely. to actually have to purchase the Lone Lands, but now that's included with, with the free-to-play also. Oh, nice. So, therefore, normally you'll first purchase the ones that you're naturally going to be going to next. Mm-hmm. Since I, I don't think buying Mordor when you are just getting out of the Lone Lands is a good idea. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> then let's head into our week in Lotro and Sans Window. What were you up to? Well, this week, uh, I went skirmishing with Pineleaf and encountered some new encounters with my main hunter, (laughs) Sanswanda. 
somebody may have mentioned that I should try for Skirmisher of Middle Earth, and that would solve my marks problem that I seem to be having. So, um, it's kind of deceptive looking at the list of like how many you need. You're like, oh yeah, I just need two more encounters for this one skirmish. If I go through this skirmish, then I can be done with this skirmish and go to the next one. But no, they're randomized. So, but I got a few <laughs> new ones. Um, and Highly has good luck like that. He is. <laughs> I think out of the three skirmishes we did, um, I got five new encounters that I needed. So that was wow. pretty cool. Including finishing the Ford. Including yeah. finishing oh. the Ford of Brunin. Um, <laughs> so that one's done. Um, and then I introduced my sister. And I guess technically I didn't really introduce my nephew, but I uh, <laughs> incentivized him to try again. Um, to the Ominous Pool, Sinister Keg, and Moria Keg. He'd already tried the Sinister Keg once before, but the Ominous Pool was new. And he can't really try the Moria Keg. But we had a lot of fun. Um, I told them, like, I had this new housing decoration at the Ken House. They should totally go check it out. And they did, and it was really awesome. Whoa, whoa, what's this? Do you really just click on it? It says ominous. What's going to happen? Um, <laughs> and then uh, they used it, and, oh, that's so cool. And uh, can we both go at once? No, one at a time. Um, and then got them to use the Sinister Keg, and they were on level 20-something characters. <laughs> And I was like, oh, you're probably going to be fine. Like, you're level 20-something. Like, you're not likely to go anywhere more dangerous than the library in Duolon. <laughs> like, really? I have the worst luck with Sinister Kegs, apparently. Um, <laughs> so they both used the Sinister Keg, and one of them ended up in Angmar, and the other was in <laughs> Orkel. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, my first encounter with a Sinister Keg, I ended up just outside of Ohio. Yeah, and at level 24. <laughs> my nephew ended up in Angmar in some random little hunter camp. Um, and fortunately they were all friendly and he was ported out and uh, my sister ended up in Fork Hell being chased by a Gowardane and <laughs> ran into the water to escape, forgetting that it would her to death. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she wasn't even looking where she was going. Excuse me. She just ran and yeah, she died from the water. So, um, yeah, after that, I was kind of surprised I convinced her to try the Moria keg. But, um, <laughs> we were, we grabbed some overlevel characters and went in, um, the first two, I think first two, two or three times, we ended up in the same place. And then the third time, I keep wanting to get to the, um, the tavern above the 21st hall, because I hear that this is the way to do so. And mm -hmm. we both we both drank, and we went to different places, and she got there. So that was pretty cool. Um, I ended up in the Red Horn Lode somewhere, on top of a rock that you can't get off of without jumping to your death or porting. Um, <laughs> you know, nowhere dangerous. Um, but yeah, that was a lot of fun. And, oh, during the field trip, I quickly discovered why people say that minis on war steeds aggro the landscape. <laughs> I grow all the things. Uh, uh, things were going quite nicely. I was fighting this one ruffian that I rode over the top of, and there was this nice wooled grazer nearby, just peacefully grazing, no problem, just riding circles around it. And suddenly it's mad at me. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hit it. I didn't touch it. I didn't change what I was targeting. I didn't. And they're like, you've got like five things charging you now. What were you doing? <laughs> I was, like, I was just fighting this ruffian. I have no idea what happened. I didn't even go crazy. And uh, after figuring out that it was one of my skills that has quite the radius on it. Yeah. And it's up to eight targets. Uh, I promptly Oy. proceeded to aggro the landscape several times trying to figure out my skills and what I was doing. Nice. So, um, so you just aggroed all of the things. Yeah, oh, yeah. We, we killed lots of things. Um I finally started just getting off my war steed to fight so I wouldn't keep bringing more to the fight. But, um, yeah, that was pretty fun. And I think that she's going to, um, 
have a lot of fun with her war steed, but might spend a good bit of time in the healing lines if she's not more careful. So, Black, how was your week? Yes, uh, okay, so my Hunter Black Stardust uh, learned that fishing in Felagoth is a great way to get cracked barrels. <laughs> and so I think I need to work on fishing a little bit more. Um, I think I think I already have a new sponsor as well. Um, I think I sh- you guys should let me uh, be the sponsor for fixing barrels because I have so many cracked barrels I'm going to start repairing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That that was interesting because you were constantly getting things like cracked barrels and stuff like this. I'm getting fish, and since when is getting fish, you're getting barrels. Right. <laughs> oh, and we got old gloves. Yes, old gloves. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I, you guys would get old gloves, or I would get old gloves. You guys would get new gloves. It was like you, your all of your stuff was slightly better than mine. It was. It's <laughs> <laughs> coincidentally while we were sitting here, um, I just caught my very first fish in the new area. So. <laughs> Congratulations. All right. Uh, <laughs> so I also got to friend with Rangers of the Thillian in my quest for this brown fox. This has turned into some crazy long nightmare of mine, but I want the title. That is the last fox I need, and I will have this, but I have Kindred to go unless one pops up in, in the auction house. So I got there. Uh, let's see. And then I also, so I had to defend my honor for my wife while she accused me of RNG manipulation. Um <laughs> Basically, we were running court of Saragos with our son, and we opened the first chest, and out pops. Um, I got a scroll uh, of Amphilus uh, of Empowerment. I got one of those, and then the next uh, chain, or the next uh, chest, I end up getting a um, Crystal of Remembrance as well. Meanwhile, she got nothing. So, uh, oh. Was, oh, yeah. yeah. I so, like that. Yeah, so, I mean, it was just crazy that I got everything, and she was really upset because I was the high level, and it was closer to their level, and so, yeah. So, anyway, uh, that was my week. Terry Adwin, how was yours? Well, I had, actually, a pretty light week um, this week, but I did Chapter 6 of the Elf Allegiance, so I ground out some dailies so I could get the stupid Allegiance thingies, and then I found myself a skirmish camp so I could use the rep tomes so that I could actually get extra bang for my buck with those allegiance thingies. And I got to allegiance level 25 so that I could do chapter six of the elf allegiance, which involved a chat with Arwen. And I am officially not finishing the elf allegiance because I no longer care what the elves want. I don't care. I'm done. I'm so <laughs> done. Is it because of what because- Arwen had to say or because you had to go talk to Arwen? Okay, so well, a little of both actually. So, so the quest <laughs> is now. Now, leading up to this quest chain, I've got to got to refresh everybody's memories. First of all, there is the session play from I from Mordor. Basically, it's a session play for Mordor because I can't say the other word. Um, it's a nightmare. It's the session play that took me like four tries to complete it because it is so bad. Um, so there, so that happened. And then they send me hither and yon and more hither and yon some more to go search for Glorfindel. And while I'm looking for Glorfindel, they want me to collect seeds from all the elves all over Middle Earth. And then when we finally catch up to Glorfindel, you find him fighting a Balrog. And you're supposed to be you're helping him fight the Balrog, but really you just kind of stay and watch him fight the Balrog and be awesome. And I was so I was really kind of over being done with the elves anyway. And so chapter six, they hand you the packet of seeds um, and also this this gift thingy that Glorfindel has crafted, which is the, the wedding gift for Arwen, and tell you to go to Arwen and give it to her. Now, they give you this quest in the court of Celeborn in the middle of Karis Galathon. And by the way, you can't go from the court of Celeborn back out into Lothlorien because you can't just run out the door. Not like you can with the Mental Legions and Minas Tirith. You can just go out the door and you're in Minas Tirith. No, they can't do that for the elves because the elves have to be special. <laughs> so I have to take this round trip um, basically to find a stable that's going to take me to Rivendell. I basically ended up back in Mordor so I could take a stable to Southbury so I could go to Rivendell so I could find the crafting super secret crafting area that you get to when your rep is high enough with the elves which is where Arwen is, and then she wants to walk around slowly and have a chat about how much it sucks that she's going to have to be mortal now. 
<laughs> yeah, well, okay. You chose it. <laughs> I mean, there's there's some fantastic lore stuff if you're into the lore, and there's some great elf stuff if you really like elves. I don't care. I officially am done. So I went and started the Dwarf Allegiance. <laughs> Nice. Um, <laughs> and got a little irritated because apparently, so when the Dwarf Legion started and you had the Hall of Erebor, Erebor wasn't actually officially on the map yet because we didn't have the strongholds of the North area. So I figured there had to be some way to get to Erebor from where you talk to the, the initial dwarf outside the Black Gate. And why all of these quests are starting outside the Black Gate and not, like, conveniently located near Stable Master, I have not the first clue. But they do. So you are riding all over the place looking for people to talk to. And so I talked to the dwarf and it says, okay, so go to Erebor and talk to so-and-so. And I'm looking and I'm like, okay, how do I get to Erebor? Turns out that there is a goat to take you directly to Erebor. However, instead of actually putting it by the quest givers, they located it like across the road and up north a little bit. So barely diagonally after having, across the road. Yes. Yeah, after after having talked to Arwen and like losing my patience completely with the elves, I wasn't really in a great frame of mind to go looking all over the place for the dwarf goat. So I uh, used my milestone back to Felagoth and I spent a myth or coin to go to Erebor. So that I could just talk to some dwarves who, by the way, have decided that they are going to go quest for treasure in Mordor. So I'm reading the quest text from these dwarves who are talking about all the glory and treasure they're going to get from Mordor. And I'm like, guys, I've been to Mordor like multiple times. There's no treasure there. (laughs) But being dwarves, obviously, they're not going to listen to me. So I'm sure that this is probably going to end badly for somebody. I'm hoping that somebody isn't me for once. <laughs> but, you know, stay stay tuned. I'll keep you posted. Um, Pine Leaf, how was your week? Oh, first of all, Arandis, did you? Oh, well, my week was even lighter than Terry's, so oh. we can go right to yours. Uh, very well. We'll begin with my Gladden lore master, who was doing the ending pieces to book four. And, of course, did the Drowned Treasury. And my lore master was level 59 and had just gotten the Menagerie skill, the Sikkim skill. And I promptly demonstrated how quickly a blue-lined lore master can get through the Drowned Treasury. (laughs) Whenever I came to a boss, I go, Sikkim! Sikkim! Sick em. Rip, 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 rip. When it came to the two queens, sick em. Rip, rip, rip. <laughs> Where are they? <laughs> Even the water melted to, to sick em. Nice. So, so I just ripped through them. I got through it in record time. And I think it's also one of the few times where I didn't make a single wrong turn. Because usually I make at least one wrong turn while turn while trying to do the drowned treasury. But I didn't do any wrong turns. I went in the right direction. I through the right right wheels and all that stuff and had Sikkim in order to rip through the mob. So it was a record drowned treasury for me there. Then on my Creek Hollow Warden, I completed the Northern Kingdoms and which I released in the videos that you that we mentioned earlier. And I also did the parts of the Lay of Rhyme and Rust of Rust and Rhyme that have already been released since that's episodic content and I will be releasing videos on them also at some point. Then on Evernight, my warden killed ten rats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Of course that is I am running the Isengard content in there and of course so you can see that I'm in the middle of the part where I'm down captive down in Isengard and I'm doing all those quests down there. Oh, you're totally a guest. Totally a guest. Yes. I, I, I am an honored guest where I'm I'm just asked to er, everybody else asks me to work while I'm there a guest there, I suppose. Saruman's <laughs> <can be> different. <laughs> I mean they even let you keep your weapons while you're there. 
Yeah, I guess you got a good point there. Uh, certainly my spears have a good point. <laughs> Therefore... Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I just got that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's head into News Beyond Lotro. And Game Shop, Games Workshop is releasing the Lord of the Rings Quest to Mount Doom board game. This sounds amazing. I actually had to double check the date on this article to make sure it wasn't another April Fool's joke. Because it actually looks really cool. It is rather... The thing that's unusual here is that it's game work, Games Workshop, because I didn't think that they had a license for The Lord of the Rings. But all right, because I, I usually associate yeah, I Fancy know. Flight Games for it. Um, for Lord of the Rings stuff. Um, but the description sounds really cool. So you take the role of members of the Fellowship, each with their own unique abilities, and you're hunting right. for the One Ring hidden somewhere in Middle-Earth. The catch is that while you still want to take the Ring to Mount Doom to destroy it, the player who finds it tries to keep it secret, lest someone else find out about it and steal it. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's fantastic! <laughs> Okay, that's a. <laughs> and somebody in chat says that Games Workshop has a license. They had the tabletop model game when the movies came out. Ah, okay, okay, that's what we had. So they probably. Okay, they had the tabletop model game. I suppose that would be with the. Well, yes, but even if they did have a license back when the movie came out, it would not have necessarily followed that it would ha still have it today because other companies... It could just be something that they kept up to date with and, yeah. and renegotiated that we just didn't hear about because maybe it got eclipsed by the whole uh, hullabaloo over the Amazon d deal. Well, there is that too. So therefore, they say ages eight and up plays thirty to forty-five minutes. I thought you were going to say people. I'm like, wow, <laughs> <laughs> that's a massive game. No, 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 no. <laughs> Two to five players. Gotcha. And the MSRP has not yet been announced, though I suppose they will announce that when it gets closer to the release date. There well then uh, apparently we have here from the chat here that GW apparently they do have the games that they made for the movies are also still being sold. So yeah, they would have had to keep their license yeah, up they'd have to in keep order the to do that. Up. I guess then they had them for at least a license for miniatures games or yeah, I mean, it could fall yeah. under the original license, and it's just a new concept that they came out with. We currently have 18 supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to join this illustrious rate of players and help support loads of players, simply go to the donations page where you can support the Players Alliance on Patreon. There you'll find rewards, including a mention on the podcast of your choice, or even be a guest with us for an episode of Lojo Players News. We did not receive any emails this week, but if you'd like to send us one, you can send it to podcast at lotroplayers.com. You can also follow us at Twitter, the Players Alliance at Players Ally, Lotro Players at Lotro Players, Ariandis at Ariandis, Black at Black Shrubbery, Pine Leaf at Pine Leaf Needles, Sandswinda at Sandswinda, and Terry Edwin at Terry Edwin. We currently have four shows every Monday at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. We have DDO Players News every Saturday at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. We have Lotro Players News every other Thursday at 9.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. We have XP Quest. And on the first Tuesday of each month at 9.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we have Chromatic Bits. You can join us for our live shows at lotroplayers.com slash live. And that is all for tonight. And this is Pine Mules reminding you to skirmish responsibly.